start with Tropical Storm Elsa, expected to impact Tampa Bay later today. We are in team coverage this morning. Lee Spann and Amanda Holly are with us, showing us the latest path of the storm. We begin with Lee. Uh, what can we expect here today, Lee? Yeah, unfortunately, our conditions are going to go downhill today as Elsa lifts north. So as of the 2 a.m. update, we're still waiting on the 5 a.m. complete forecast package from the National Hurricane Center. But you can clearly see some of those outer rain bands already be beginning to affect South Florida. Winds of 60 miles per hour as the system rides up our coast. We should expect tropical storm force winds, which is why we have a tropical storm warning. Those orange shaded counties, Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, Hillsborough, Pinellas, Manatee, and Sarasota counties. Here's that forecast. This is the forecast track of 11, as of 11 o'clock last night, and it did shift a little closer, unfortunately, to our coast. So you see it's just off the Manatee, Sarasota coastline tonight at 8 p.m. Thankfully, not much stronger at about 65 miles per hour, but then heads up for the nature coast overnight into the early morning hours tomorrow. That's when it's going to begin to make that turn to the north and come on shore and then head up into the into the southeast. We have pretty high likelihood of at least getting tropical storm force wind gusts. So when you see that red purple color, that's right along our shoreline. So a high likelihood as that center of circulation moves toward us that those wind speeds will get up to 30, 40, maybe even 50 miles per hour. The good news is it's not expected to be much stronger than that, and that's because you can see the computer models here all coming into a pretty good agreement. But this red shading is upper-level wind shear, keeping the storm around, uh, is keeping the storm uh, weaker as it gets closer to us. So that is certainly some good news. We like to stay in the red. The wind, the wind shear keeps the storm from increasing. But as it passes us, it's going to have some specific concerns for our coastline, and that's where Amanda Holly comes in. Hey, good morning, Lee. You know, I, a lot of people might be looking at this and seeing the cone and seeing how it doesn't really include a whole lot of our southern counties, but something that you should really be aware of as we head into the next 24 hours is really that we're actually going to see a lot of coastal impacts because this storm is kind of a lopsided storm. All of the impacts are going to be on the east side, and that's exactly where our coastline will be. So tonight we'll have the chance to see up to four to maybe six inches of localized rainfall accumulations when those tropical rain bands move through again the grounds are saturated in those tropical rain bands we're also going to be talking about the tropical storm force winds again that's why we have the tropical storm warnings in effect so our coastline mainly does have the chance to see 40 maybe 60 mile per hour at times sustained wind couldn't can't rule out some gusts slightly higher than that right along the immediate coastline and we're also talking about the low end threat for an isolated tornado again we're going to be on that eastern side so you have to watch for that in some of those rotating rain bands now the sea level rise is, rise is also going to be very important here. Three to five feet is possible pretty much the entire length of our coastline, but it's not going to be until that center moves off to the north. That's when the winds will actually be pushing that water into our bays and into our rivers, and that's when we'll have the chance for those higher than normal tides. I'll talk about the high tide times coming up as well as some inland impacts we could see. Lee? And that's why we do have the storm surge alert right now, the storm surge warning because of those onshore winds that Amanda was just talking about. So what's kind of breaking this down? The strength of the, of the storm. Thankfully, as I mentioned, it's not going to strengthen much more in the Gulf. But as Amanda mentioned, we're on the east side of the storm, the stronger side to affect the west coast. So impacts, flooding from rain and coastal flooding from those higher than average tides overnight into early tomorrow morning. Strong enough wind gusts, unfortunately, that could bring some trees down because the ground is very saturated and unstable right now and isolated tornadoes with the worst weather coming tonight and into tomorrow morning. Now, my fantastic scale today is just a two because we're going to get higher and higher winds, more and more tropical downpours as the day goes along. You can see those rain chances start at 30 percent. We're already seeing a few light showers now going up to about an 80 percent chance between 6 p.m. and about overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Lee and Amanda. And this is a look at the impact tropical storm Elsa had on Cuba as the storm made landfall. Heavy rain flooded the streets and 60 mile an hour winds battered the island. Forecasters said some areas would get 5 to 10 inches of rain and a few others were expected to get 15 inches. And now Elsa is heading our way. Eight on your side has a crew in Pinellas County to see how people and businesses there are preparing. We're going to start, though, with Marco Villarreal. He's live from a little farther south in Fort Myers Beach. Marco, I know you spoke with some people down there, and it doesn't really seem to be a lot of urgency. Yeah, it's very interesting for those who have lived here a long time. They're just kind of keeping an eye on Elsa, but they're not too worried. And even in areas like this, Fort Myers Beach, which is a very touristy area, they've got a lot of shops, a lot of bars, a lot of restaurants, and of course, the beach. You would think it's a place to be clearing out when they hear about a storm, but 
we haven't seen much of that either. Well, not too far from here is another well-known and highly visited area, Sanibel Island. And while a strong afternoon thunderstorm had cars lining up to get off the island yesterday, the locals who live and own businesses on the island stayed open. And many have been here through much bigger storms like Hurricanes Charlie and Irma. They say Elsa doesn't compare. When asked about preparations, they say they'll probably stay open and not do, do much more than that. Hurricane Irma and Charlie we did, but not for this one. I'm not too concerned about it, really. Just flooding and some trees down. I really couldn't care about it. I mean, it's like 60, 80 mile an hour winds, something like that. I'm not worried about it. No shelter, nothing. We don't need shutters. Officials and they plan to stay open today, only saying they will keep an eye on the storm as it nears and make decisions according to its direction and strength. And even back here in this touristy area, the resort's seem full. The shops ready to open later this morning. And we're going to hear more from some of the tourists that have come out here to enjoy their week and see what they think about Tropical Storm Elsa headed this direction. For now, reporting live in Fort Myers Beach, Marco Villarreal, 8 on your side. Okay, thank you, Marco. We want to head over now to Pinellas County. Beth Rousseau is there this morning. Beth, how are business owners doing there? Are they worried about the storm? Hey, Chris and Avery, keep in mind that the last tropical storm that these business owners prepped for was Tropical Storm Ada, and that sent storm surge from Johns Pass all the way here into the boardwalk area up to this third step. So that means that there was more than a foot of water inside these businesses, which you can see are boarded up this morning. They're taking Elsa prep much more seriously. Coming back the next day and just seeing the devastation along Gulf Boulevard, along local businesses, seeing some of those uh, businesses that weren't as lucky, uh, weren't as overprepared, because no one was expecting what we saw that night. And here at Hubbard's Marina, they still have damage that they haven't had a chance to repair since Tropical Storm Ada in 2020. So the owner here says that that storm tore apart their dock and sent feet of water flooding into their shop. It's definitely shaping the way that they prep for Elsa. They're working on stronger ways to store boats, putting their storm windows out, which I just showed you, and doing everything they can to stop water from getting in as they do expect flooding with Elsa. Keep in mind that Pinellas County is under a local state of emergency emergency. So county leaders, they want everyone to be prepping in this way. Here at Hubbard's, I want to show you that in addition to boarding up, they've also added foam just as an extra effort to keep any of the water out. This business owner says he has a warning for others who are in the process of prepping because of his experience and the aftermath of Ada. All that coming up at 530. We're live this morning. Beth Russo, 8 on your side. And be sure to download the 8 on your side hurricane guide on WFLA.com. It includes information about evacuation routes, flood maps, and shelters.